up you guys my name is Selena and today's gonna be a tutorial showing you guys how to do a speed ramp motion blur transition in Premiere Pro and this is inspired by JR Ally and a lot of other youtubers um but yeah okay so here are my two clips so my first one is of the water and it whips at the end but you honestly don't need a whip but for your clips, you're going to want some movement in the clips, but it doesn't actually have to be like a full on whip. You just kind of need some movement. Like in my second clip, in the beginning of the clip, she moves her hair and like she moves to face the view. So you kind of want like some sort of moving thing in the clip, like either your camera can move or like the subject can move. But see, for my first clip at the end, it kind of stays on like the floor of the ship. So I'm going to just cut that out. You don't want your ending to have like kind of a still video you kind of want some sort of movement in the clip so now I just have my ocean clip and then it whips just a little bit okay so now for the speed ramping you're gonna right click on the clip and then press show clip keyframes and then time remapping and enable speed and you're gonna do that on both clips Okay, so once you've done that, we can actually add the speed ramping. So what speed ramping is, is just like basically speeding up the ending or the beginning of the clip to kind of make a neat speed transition. Okay, so you can go to your video one line and go to the left in this little open space. And if you just drag up in that open area, you can see your keyframes better. So for my first clip, right when it starts to whip, I'm going to press the keyframe button for speed. It's going to make a keyframe. And now I can drag up the line at the end. So this is going to speed up the clip in the end. And you can drag the line more up if you want it to be faster or lower if you want it to be slower and so I can also cut a little bit of the end because I think the transition is going for too long so now you can see a very very subtle whip and now if you see this little cut um and like marker at the top you can drag the one on the left and you can pull it out so that it makes the keyframe going into the speed very smooth Okay, so now that looks good. So now we're going to work with our second clip. So we're going to basically do the same thing, but in reverse. I'm going to go after her hair whips and settles in place. I'm going to press that keyframe button for speed. And then I'm going to drag the line in the beginning of the clip so it speeds up. And I'm going to kind of match the line of the other keyframe so it's going at the same speed. And you can also drag that marker line so that it's a smooth transition so you see that diagonal line form. So yeah, that looks like a pretty good speed ramp. Like honestly, this could be our final product if we wanted. But if you want to have that sort of motion blur effect to it, you can go and add directional blur. So we're going to search that up in effects and we can put that on our first clip. So we're going to add the blur right when our keyframes start. But first we're going to just bring the blur length up and just so we can see the blur. And then you can go to the direction and change the direction to the way you want it to look. So you don't really have to move the direction if you don't want to. But since this is kind of moving towards the right, I can kind of make the direction go to the upward right direction. So I'm going to keep it at 81 degrees. And then we'll bring that blur length back to zero. Because the only reason I brought it up was to see the direction. So we're going to press the keyframe button at zero right where our speed ramp starts. And then we'll go to the very end of the clip. And we're going to bring that blur length to like 26. So it's a really subtle blur. And you can even go a little less if you want. Now you might see that after you add the directional blur, the edges start to kind of blacken when the blur is happening. So... It's more intense once your blur length is like a higher number. So if you want, it'll kind of ruin the quality, but it's going to be fast anyways. You can bring the scale to 102 or further if you did a higher blur length. Okay, so like I told you in the beginning, you don't need to actually have a whip like how I did in this clip. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and show you guys how to do it without a whip. So I'm going to go to my first clip and then just bring the keyframes of the directional blur and the timer mapping further up so I can have it happen while it's on the ocean and then I'm just going to cut the excess part where the whip starts so you guys can kind of see how the transition works without the whip.
so it kind of blurs really fast on the ocean and it looks pretty cool because it kind of already adds movement and yeah just adding directional blur can make a pretty cool transition and and sometimes if there's not as much movement in the clip like there's no whip in this one you can make the blur length higher so you can really see the motion blur effect on it so this is the one with the whip versus the one without the whip so yeah you can Kind of see how this transition works using directional blur with any clip probably if it has any sort of movement in it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to try to come back with more videos and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.